Welcome back everybody to episode number 31 here in the Systematic Factory. I have been doing some uh, work in between episodes here. And let me quick fix this. I'm really low on metals, so I have to be careful with what I'm using here. Uh, I'm making some space to expand this farther, but what, what I've done here to first show you is I did some work on our petroleum generator system here. I now have three generators running. I think I'm going to expand this up to add a couple more. But for each generator, I need to have four ethanol distillers. Right now I have 14 here, which is enough to do three and a half. So I'm going to add a couple more to get to four. I may, I may work it out to make it so I have just enough to do five. But for each of these distillers to run 100% of the time, I need 7.2 fully grown arbor trees. And by fully grown, I mean ones that have all the branches all the way around. A couple of these are missing one here or there, so it's, it's a little less reduced. But I doubled the size of our tree farm. Not quite, but almost. I'm still working on getting the last few things planted here. But we are getting there slowly. Um, as far as the trees go, we basically need 101 trees to support what we have there. There's 91 here. There's another nine here that makes it 100 plus a little extra. Um, we have more because, it's like I said, some of these, not many, but some of them are missing uh, a branch here or there. And I may go in and fix that at some point. But also, it's better to just have extra in case you need them. So for each one of these distillers I need to add 7.2 so if I need to add two more distillers to get that fourth petro petroleum generator going that's another 14 that brings us basically up to about here and then if I wanted to add another one I would need 28 29 more and that's just about what I would have so if I add two more petroleum generators and the ethanol distillers to support them um, that would cap out what we could do with the space here I could make some more space to add some more trees if I wanted, but but basically we're ending up using so far like a quarter of the map just to support the power system using these trees. And like there's other ways we could do it. If we wanted to, we could make these domestic grow, grown trees and other things like that. Uh, some other boosts we could do to it. But these are all wild trees, so they don't need any inputs. No, no uh, items, no waters. You know, nothing. So they can just keep growing and they will keep this running infinitely. It was a fun project to do. Uh, I probably would not use it as a primary way to fuel a, or power a, an a, asteroid, but I had fun doing it. While I was working on that, I was checking in on our metal supplies because I'm, I need the gold and uh, steel and things like that to work on our oxalate refinery, which is our next project. And I noticed that our gold was not going up. And I did some research, I figured out the problem. This design had a minor flaw, I guess. I When I put it in, I just put in water. I didn't realize that if you overpressurize the steam, the volcano shut off. Um, so the magic number is 150 kilograms of steam. So the this one has 200 kilograms of steam in it. This volcano, when it erupts, it is... It just says overpressure. It doesn't give you any metal. So we're not getting anything out of it. So what I did is I set up a system here to fix it. We're just waiting for the steam to heat up now to the point where it gets... turns into steam so it can... Sorry, so that it turns into hot enough steam that the turbines can take it out. So I did a bypass line here on the coolant so I could use this line here to make a jumper and I redirected this line upwards to this line, which goes over to our water tank. And as soon as this steam gets hot enough, the steam turbines will take it. When it, exha when it exhausts the 95 degree water, it'll get pumped this way instead of going back into the chamber. And then we can just keep that loop running to get this steam down below 150 kilograms per tile. I set this to minus 40, so it'll just keep running with the coolant loop getting colder and colder, which is fine until, actually we're at minus 36, we're getting close to the point where it's going to shut itself off. Um, can't go much cooler than that. We may have to figure something out if it doesn't start turning into steam soon. 
if we get this down above below 150 then this will start working and we can handle it the other option is to cool the steam down to the point where i can pump it out with water or put in a, 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 a gas pump and pull it out that way as steam and it'll cool it now when it gets out those are messier i'm hoping that this will work we're getting close we need it to 125 degrees we're at 112 we'll see how it goes i also noticed that because i didn't know how that worked quite right a lot of my other ones were like that so now i have fixed these this iron one in 25 more cycles will be working i was was i didn't notice it until i was running out of metals but i all of all of my aluminum my cobalt my gold my iron could all be renewable and they were they were running out like crazy um so the tamers on this side were the same way they worked for a long time i didn't even notice it but then once they got to the point where they were over pressurized they stopped so i took out um a lot of the steam in them this one i did a slightly different method i tried i cooled down the water using ice or the steam so that then i could pump it out it was a lot messier that's why i decided to try the other method but this one should be good once it heats up enough for this to turn into steam i think the pressure should be good but if not we may need to relook at this one again but this one's not active for another 36 cycles so we have time to get that we fixed our cobalt volcano so now we're getting cobalt again uh, i also fixed our aluminum volcano so we're getting that and then I have one more cobalt volcano up here that I am pretty much in the same boat with the gold one. I'm just waiting for the steam to get hot enough that it can come out because we have 256 kilograms. So when you watch this cobalt volcano, it's about to erupt. Instead of us getting cobalt, it'll just hit the, the timer. It'll say it's over pressure and it will cycle to the next uh, phase. Over pressure idle in 20 seconds. So that was what was happening. So this is heating the steam up. We're right on the cusp now. When we get to 125 degrees, our steam turbines will pick up some of this pressure and will vent it out. So let's see that's happening now. We have the water. It just comes out uh, through this line, which is going back into our water tanks to be sorted. So we just need to keep going here with our temperatures to keep doing that until this goes below 150 kilograms per tile you see now it's starting to pick up speed this one shouldn't be any problem because this coolant is still well above zero so we can take this way cooler and this pump will or this aqua tuner will keep heating things up so we'll just let this one run for a while and then the steam here will vent itself out so if we go back to hazard auto to check on our gold one Let's see where we are with the temperatures. This is still running, but our temperature is only at 115 degrees. Our coolant is now getting to the point where it is going to be higher than, or it's going to be lower than a minus 40, so it's going to shut that aqua tuner off. So I think I'm going to have to come up with a new system here, how I want to handle this. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to just let it go for now and see what happens if this can get the temperature high enough. And if not, I'll probably end up getting this steam out in a different way. I may have to cool it down and take it out that way, which was, wasn't was too bad. It's kind of a pain, but it wasn't that bad. And uh, we'll get this up and running, and then we can start getting our gold supplies up. As we stand, we have 35 tons of gold, so I have enough of that. To start doing the oxalate refinery but it's not renewable until i get this up and running what i do need is i need this iron to start producing again because i am pretty much completely out of steel if we look here i have 1.3 tons of steel left and when i got to that point and realized that my iron wasn't renewing to make more steel that's when i knew that something was up and i had to fix the problem but we now have um that problem's fixed we should be swimming in refined metals pretty soon and we'll be able to continue on with the, our last rush to get our achievements done we don't have a lot left to do going through them several times but once we get to space we're going to be knocking these out really quick so just one more or a couple more things to fix and then we'll be able to start our uh, space exploration in full 
And the nice thing is I'll be able to bring back a lot of these metals that I used up because those volcanoes weren't working by going into space and mining for some. Okay, I've gotten this one finished. We're doing some cleanup here, but basically I um, reconnected the steam vent back into here. I fixed the loop so it's working fine and the loop is still running. You can see we're about to hit our, our eruption time. And because this is now below 150 kilograms per second, instead of it overpressurizing and us not getting any metal out of it, we will get cobalt that we can send back through our loop that we can cool down so that we can use it. So let's just wait and see that. And there we go. Now we're getting cobalt again. It's actually increasing the temperature in here, but everything is running. Cobalt's getting picked up just like it should. And we'll get our allotment of cobalt getting processed through our loop. Let's make sure this temperature is set right while we're here. As long as the cobalt is on the loop and it's above 40 degrees, it is still going to keep looping around. You can see it's still at like 400 degrees. As soon as it comes through this loop, it cools down pretty quick. First pass, we get down to 100 degrees. One of them was actually cold enough. We'll go through a second loop. It's at 177 now. And now it's just over 40 degrees. So we'll probably have to make a third pass through the coolant. And that will be uh, enough to get it to come out. The coolant loop is still running. And so that will keep cooling this block back down so that it's ready for the next loop. And this will run just fine for all time to give us plenty of cobalt. So our cobalt is starting to build back up and we're set. So this is done. We're going to just clean up the mess that we have around here and we'll go away from there. Let's make sure we don't have anything inside as well. We're all set. Back on Hazardato, our gold one. Problem is, is we got to 120 degrees in steam. The coolant loop is now... Oh, we actually got a little bit of iron out of there. So this is at 40 degrees. The iron coming through is at uh, over a thousand. Oh, it's micrograms of iron. That's probably why it's not cooling down very quick. Sometimes it takes a lot longer to do that when we do. But this should be heating our loop back up, which means that that will help getting this aqua tuner to keep running. And we'll be able to do that. Let's put our door back in here now that we fix that. Um, so we just have to wait until it gets just hot enough that this loop starts. We're still connected up to it. Oh, wait, no, this is our iron volcano. That one is at the correct steam. We're all good. This is the one we're looking at. Steam here is at 118 degrees. The problem is we have just a little bit of gold going around the loop. And you can see that gold is 120 degrees, but it's just a microgram of gold. It's not going to have enough heat to heat up this very much, which means that that's not going to be enough to get this aqua tuner running. Our loop is at minus 37 degrees. It's actually coming through here at um, just under minus 40. If I go too low, though, this petroleum is going to break. So petroleum, let's see, we can look at petroleum here. The freezing point is minus 57. So I can go down to minus 40. Uh, let's see, I can get to 50, minus 58 and I'll still be signed. So let's go to minus 44 on our sensor. If we go punch past that, we're really pushing it to the point where petroleum is going to freeze and crack in our pipes. And we definitely don't want to do that. But this will be enough to just push the steam just a little bit higher like we needed to. You can see it's slowly rising and we'll get the gold volcano up and running again as well. Needed some more heat to get the this running again. I tried putting a couple of um, radiant pipes up here, which got me a little bit more heat. Even though this is like minus 10 out here, it's still warmer than the minus 40 that's in the coolant line. This just wasn't enough. So what I decided to do is I put a pump down here with a bottle emptier and bringing down some of the hot petroleum we have up here that comes in from the other base. Um, 
it's not super hot, but it's hot enough. And we're dumping it into the coolant line so that we're getting a mix of coolant that is a little bit hotter, bringing the temperature up just enough to keep the aqua tuna running, which is getting the steam ever slow, ever so slowly hotter. Um, and we have this basin here that, or the reservoir, that holds extra coolant. So we have plenty of space in the line to add it. Um, when you're adding coolant line in like this, it's best to do it at the end of a bridge. That way you can do one and one to go in there. You could also theoretically just let it run for a little while and let some of it go in that way. But I want to keep this loop running. Um, I did it this way. Yeah, this would this would go through and it would only let more coolant go into the loop while we're doing it. Yeah, I think I'll let that go for just a little while till I get this temperature up a little hotter. And then that will help us. Oh, I don't want to change those out. Why, 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 you must, why must you do the things like that to me? I'm sorry. That was actually not supposed to even be ceramic, so it's all good. So this will... We'll keep putting in a little more. We'll get this up a little bit warmer. And then we'll send that around again. And it will get those last few degrees that we need so that we can get our gold volcano up and running. Our steam turbines are kicking in now. We have gotten over 125 degrees, and this should be a system that continues to um, fulfill itself. So the steam steam turbines are going to generate heat, which means our loops are going to keep getting warmed back up, which means that we'll have to keep running the aqua tuner to cool it down to generate more steam, which will get taken out, and the steam turbines being hot will keep heating the coolant up so this will keep running long enough that we can get the pressure in here down so that the volcano will start working and then the volcano will add a lot of heat which will keep this going ironically i think that because i had so much steam in here because i put so much water in initially it was while that's good because then it takes a long time to to change temperatures because of the um the mass that we have uh it also means that like it's not going to, it's not going as efficiently because we are dumping heat in. We have to dump a lot of heat in before we can keep the loop running, and it just doesn't work great with the coolant. So I guess that makes sense as to why they keep it so that you have to have 150 kilograms or less pressure in here for this to work because that would probably break more than just this system. So you can see it's this is running pretty constantly now. It's pulling steam out. Hopefully, by the time this erupts again, we'll be ready. I don't. I think it'll probably be one more cycle before it happens because this is only about 180 seconds left. Uh, or no, 100 and just over 60 seconds left. Yeah, every point one is 60 seconds. So now we're at, you know, all less than a minute. We're a little over a minute to till it goes, and we're still at 175. I don't know that we're going to get any gold out on this run, but the next time through, we should be able to get um, gold coming out of here again, which is great. So then we have our gold is renewable again. We'll get 298 grams per second gold coming out uh, for the future. Yeah, see, it's still over pressure because we're still at 169, but it's going down steadily. So by the time it comes out, um, after that, we will start getting our gold again. Because now we have another 1.2 cycles, which is uh, 720 seconds for this to get down 15 kilograms per tile. Which I think we should be able to do. Um, while we were finishing that, we managed to get almost all of our planting done here. We still have four more trees to finish with this pip. And... We have most of our branches going. We now can take these two ladders off. Uh, and so this is a really long and slow process to get these done. But once it's done, it's set up and this will just run forever for us. So that's really nice. Like I said, you do have to watch some of the branches sometimes. If you want to, when you get to that point, like if you really need that extra efficiency, what you could do 
And maybe I'll do it on one of these just to show you how you do it. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do it because because of all the plants around, it would cause problems because this one I wouldn't be able to replant because of the plants here. I would have to work my I would have to reset them all and work from the top. But like if it was one of these here, right here, where it didn't grow a branch the way you wanted it to, and you noticed it right away, you could fix it. But like I said, that's why I build extra trees into the equation. That way, when we miss a branch here or there, or one of them stops working for the way you expect for some reason, you're still set and you're able to do it. Uh, I just have those three left to go. Let's check on our tamer again. Okay, now we're under 150 kilo kilograms per tile, which is great. That means in another 420 seconds, when this goes, we'll be good. Uh, I'm actually going to let this run down until this gold volcano erupts again so that we can get this a little lower. Um, on this side of the colony, I have this tuner has been running, it was volcano has been running, and I let it go for a while. And it's right around 100, and I haven't had any problems. I know 150 is what it says, and that's where it should be. I think that this one's good. This one I have up here... Uh, sorry, not that one. It's the other one on Hazardato. I have this at 40 kilograms per, per tile. And so when this goes active again, we'll be able to see how well this performs. And then we'll get a kind of an idea of a range of where we want that to be. I think that this is what I'm going to shoot for in the future. Under 50. Um, or between maybe between 25 and 150. It's fine. We'll see. But this is getting close now so another couple of minutes we'll be able to see our gold coming out all right moment of truth time 25 seconds here and we will have gold coming out of this volcano and we want to see that it's working and there we go we have our gold again and just like in our other tamers it should get picked up and put into our conveyor loader which brings it over to this side which gets loaded into this one um, this is set up here as kind of a buffer because if we have too much it goes there so we can use it These people are actually trying to grab the gold because it's set to take it over the other side I want to stop them from doing that because I don't want them transporting 400 degree gold across to the other colony So we're gonna lock them out so they can't get in here and they will only be able to grab the gold when it gets out here as intended what we do need to do is now that that is working again, we need to reconnect our steam line here, which means we can disconnect this and we can get rid of this bridge. And once that's gone, we'll reconnect our coolant line so that it brought, it flows properly and we'll be done. We, this is closed up. They can't get in to get to the uh, gold gold will come out when it's cold and we'll be all set. So what will we do here is connect that Disconnect there. Ooh, that was not what I wanted to do. None of that got out did it oh, Let's reconnect this line Wasn't paying attention there and I let some of the coolant go through We'll just empty that back into our lines there We can get rid of all of these and these and now everything should be working here. We have a lot more coolant in here, but that's fine. That's not going to cause any issues. I want to reset this back down to minus 40. Because that's what I have all of them running at. Uh, and this will continue making steam because it's hot enough in there. And this is producing steam. So we'll our loop will keep going and our coolant will keep working. Everything is nice and cold. So the gold gets cold very quickly because it goes through. You do end up with something like this where there's like this small amount of microgram of gold because of how small that is it takes forever to cool down because it there's plenty of plenty of chill there but it doesn't transfer any heat very quickly so sometimes you end up with that it's no problem when more comes out it'll get merged with it eventually and it'll all get uh taken care of so that's all of our tamers working again so we have our metals coming back in the last thing I worked on um, was over here. We had some issues with this system. 
Uh, one big problem I had is I had, when I was trying to replace this gas pump to steel, I accidentally clicked on this wire and changed it to steel. And when I did that, um, and I replaced it, when you replace a piece of automation wire where you change the material, like this, see if I can get it to do it while we're watching here so you can see what happens. Uh, what it does is it disconnects it because uh, I guess that's, I guess you would call it a bug. It's do It doesn't do it the way it's intended because it, technically de it deconstructs and then replaces it well when it replaces it now these are no longer connected so we need to wait for somebody to come along and put this steel on and reconnect it well because this automation wire wasn't connected to the sensor and i didn't notice that that happened for pr pretty good long while this system wasn't working properly and hydrogen built up we got hydrogen pumped out into our base which you can see there's a lot of hydrogen in weird places because of it. So let me reconnect this now so I don't end up with the same problem. And there we go. So that will work. I'm going to not switch that because I don't want to have any more problems. I also switched out all these uh, pumps and electrolyzers to steel so now they can handle the heats in here now that we have that level of tech. And so this is running again and we're building up pressure on oxygen. But we got to the point where we were almost out of oxygen for both bases because of it. Um, I've taken some of those things into account, and now that I have steel tech and I have all those things, the next goal I have is to set up our oxygen setup for our oxalate refinery. And what I think I'm gonna do, because it's due, is I'm going to build a system that incorporates this into it as well. This is just a you know a three kilogram system. It works really well. Um, I want to produce more oxygen than that because I have more water than that. I have the water to produce tons of it. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to figure out exactly how much water I have to devote towards oxygen and come up with a, a design for a really big oxygen system that will just keep turning the water into oxygen and will store it infinitely just like we have been here. And that way we'll have tons of oxygen to use. Um, and we can use it for producing oxalite for our uh, space travel system. And that's what I'm going to devote the next episode to. I'm going to spend the entire time working on the oxalite refinery. We're going to get that finished. We're going to get uh, rockets built up that we'll have. We're going, to, we're going to end up with two rockets. We'll have an explorer rocket that explores out our entire star map. And then we'll have a mining rocket where we can send out to bring resources back to get the few things we need to finish up our achievements and uh, finish out this series. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. It was a lot of stuff that was just needed to be fixed and needed to be finished before we do the final push to the end of the achievement run. But it was, uh, it was a lot of work, but it was fun to do. I hope it was fun to watch. And we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.